Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Sunday night, September 28th, 2025, 10.06 p.m. California time here. Uh, latest activity on the earthquake 3D globe shows a 2.2 across the area of Texas out there in the oil fields, it looks like. Uh, starting off here up into uh, Yellowstone, number of earthquakes out here this morning. Also out around the Spencer, Idaho area. It uh, doesn't look like they've added anything else on the map here, but I was just looking at this uh, seismograph station earlier, and it does look like there's been a handful more uh, quake activity here around Yellowstone. We'll pull this up. There's some of the earthquake activity there across the uh, uh, Yellowstone area, and then we had a couple threes over in Idaho. And technically, the last event that they reported in this area was a 2.3 at 1140 a.m., so 11.40 a.m. is going to be this 2.3 right here. But look at all these other quakes that have occurred since then. We're following that. So uh, we'll probably have to add a few more quakes there onto map tomorrow morning. Nothing big, but uh, we did have a little sequence of events there across Yellowstone earlier. And uh, that was these two quakes right here. A 3.3 and a 3.1 with a couple other smaller quakes there mixed in. Uh, throughout Washington area... They actually got one earthquake there around Mount Rainier, one in Mount St. Helens, and one around Mount Hood. Well, close to Mount Hood. This is actually outside of Mount Hood area. Um, nothing big going on there for now. Um, we'll check the seismograph stations there in the morning. Uh, the tremor activity, as far as slow slip events go, we got 476 epicenters here underneath the Washington area. This has been like day number seven or so of consistent slow slip events here in this area. As you can see, the 2,169 epicenters of Trimmer all underneath the Washington area with only a handful here. It's been a little while since we've had that type of movement up north there in the Washington area. It does happen on occasion. Uh, I think it's about every 14, 16 months or so. I don't even know if they put out a uh, any new updates here. It looks like they did. Uh, well, this is from the 16th. Here's September 29th. It's not even the 29th yet. Uh, looks as if a standard northern Washington, southern Vancouver Island ETS event has been going on for almost two weeks. This one seems to have started in the south. Um... Yeah, it should, uh, if this continues as the previous previous ones have, it should pass under Victoria in about another week. So, yeah, they, they finally kicked back up on that as uh, far as, you know, noting the trimmer events up there. So we'll continue to watch it. Obviously, um, you know, the Cascadia is quite strained along its entirety. I'm thinking more along the southern end, but that's just my own observation there uh, northern california and the west coast in general now i don't know if there hasn't been any earthquake activity or if they're just you know <laughs> i i think what i'm seeing here is the same thing right i'm gonna try let me see what happens here yeah see for some reason when i pull up certain dates here or the, the current date there should be some earthquake activity. They're, they're telling me the last event was back at 6 o'clock this morning. I'm, I'm curious to see if it happens here on the Edge browser as well. Let me go check this out real quick and see what we got. Um, if it does, I'd be surprised. Uh, yes, it does. Can you believe that? Even on the Edge browser. So it might just be IP-based that... Uh, I don't know if anybody else has been having issues here, but something is going on with the reporting here to where uh, the, all the earthquake activity fails to show up. I think I have to go literally back to the last 30 days, all magnitudes, just to see some of the newer quakes out here. See that? I don't like that. That makes it hard to pinpoint where all these quakes are actually occurring, you know? Like, this is not the correct map, even though it shows it. No matter how many times I refresh it, it was doing that to me in this morning's update as well. Um, kind of a bummer as, as to why it's doing that. 
Well, let's take a look here. At least <laughs> now that I mentioned that, they all go away. Look at that. It was working on the 30-day chart, and now the last one is at 6 o'clock in the morning. So I don't know what's going on here, but it's it's uh, a little on the irritating side. Okay, so this one looks like it works. I'm not going to refresh it. I'm just going to keep it right here and not refresh this because it will disappear again. This is just the last seven days of earthquake activity. Um, I don't see any major swarms going on, but man, it... Uh, couple earthquakes there around Parkfield. It's been a little swarm of activity close to the Parkfield section, but it halts right here. This chunk of the San Andreas Fault, this area, is uh, fairly well primed for at least a six-pointer. It's been um, 21 years since the last six-pointer, and there's regular intervals of large earthquakes along this segment every 20 to 22 years, so we're definitely uh, within that time period. A lot of ones out here, definitely a lot of ones throughout the morning and the afternoon. Uh, some earthquake activity down south as you can see here in the red circles and the orange circles here. I wish I could just use the one day but uh, it will disappear on me. Nothing further there off the coast of Oregon. Um, let's see, Nevada still seeing some earthquake activity. Looks like a couple of these here from early this morning and a new recent 2.8 see if anything else is stirring up out here. Oil fields. Got to remember the quakes here. The recent ones are going to be in the orange. Uh, older ones are going to be in the yellow. But I don't want to mess with it because it will uh, it will disappear on me. Nothing going on for the New Madrid seismic zone. This is some <clears throat> some earthquake activity there uh, within the week, but not uh, not in the last couple days. See now it works. <laughs> There's the all there's the uh, all magnitudes one day as it should be working. I don't know. It's just it's so weird. Um, let's see if we got anything new out here in terms of larger movement. Uh, looks like a 5.2 around the Solomon Islands area, going to be the biggest quake uh, since this morning's update. Really, just some light earthquake activity. Things are starting to fill in here around the Vanuatu area. That's. Uh, well, it's north here of the Vanuatu, around the Solomon Islands area. This region has been uh, pretty dead in terms of earthquake activity. A lot of movement down here along the plate boundary, skipping over this and hitting Papua New Guinea. So I still think we should watch this area for some larger movement. Uh, quite a few earthquakes there around the Philippines area. And the rest of the globe there look uh, just typical. Aside from this over there in Turkey, still got a swarm of activity. So I want to see what we got here for the uh, average earthquake activity, okay? We do this on occasion. Now, some years there's going to be more, right? Because of if there's large magnitudes, you're going to see uh, a definite number there of some larger events. Um, but this is the last, this goes to the 1st of January. And I pulled up 6.0 and above. Now, on average, we should see at least one 8.0 each year. We got our 8.8. .8. That struck there in the Kamchatka area back in July. Now, magnitude 7.0 to 7.9 should be 15 of them. And we got uh, 6, 7, 8, 9... We got 11 of them, it looks like. Yeah, we got 11 7.0 to 7.9 earthquakes. So uh, pretty much on schedule, right? If, if you think about 15 of them each year. Uh, now, there should be 130 6.0 to 6.9 earthquakes. So you take away the 12 there, and that should come out to uh, 96 earthquakes of 6.0 to 6.9 which uh, is probably right about average we still have a couple months left here a few months here in the year so that should average out might be slightly above uh, but I'm not going to count the 1300 5.0 and so on but as you can see there should at least be over you know a million three hundred thousand earthquakes of 2.0 to 2.9 across the globe each year so as as in terms of larger movement, we're just about, uh, you know, just about average right now. That could obviously be 
uh, further intensified here through the rest of the year. We'll have to watch that. I still think California needs to adjust. Look at the West Coast out here in terms of 6.0 and above. All this movement happening around the Pacific Plate, all over the place. Got a lot here along the Peru Chile. Actually, the Peru Chile Trench down there looks a little absent of large earthquake activity. Normally, they should have at least a seven pointer out here, and I'm not seeing anything showing up here on the map. Uh, way down south, we had some, uh, but that's a little odd there to see just minimal activity. We might might want to watch that region. Uh, but look at the west coast here, all the way up um, the Gulf of Alaska, all the way down here, just nothing above 6.0. And gotta remember, when everything moves around, it has to have an inverse effect on the uh, other areas of the plate boundary out here just just sticking out like a sore thumb out there and back to back to no earthquake activity you guys see that i don't know that's so weird how it does that almost seems like it goes in cycles it's not even showing up there on the um oh maybe it is on the all day 30 day map but i'm not going to get into that it's just Driving me nuts. Uh, looks like a little radio blackout being observed right now on cue, on time. It happens every 24 hours there as the uh, sun is eclipsed um, by the moon, I believe. That uh, yeah should be right about now. There was a... Looks like we actually had another M flare here earlier this evening. M3.6. Uh, a little bit less than the... Uh, M flare this morning or late last night. So let's see what we got going. I wish I had the uh, the UV filter image here of the sun. That kind of bad timing there. Uh, but there's a number of sunspots over here that are just sizzling with C flare and popping M flares. 4232 looks like 4236 is pumping up as well. Um, all four of these areas uh, look to be fairly complex, with the main one being back here. So we'll expect some further M-flare activity. Uh, I may... You know, I think X-flare activity is still about 5% chance or so. We'll watch those, see if they continue to grow overnight. Uh, and of course, this imagery is still offline for whatever reason. I, it, that, this comes from the official SDO site. So I don't know what's going on with that, but it's been offline there for a couple weeks. All right, no major roars in the forecast, so we got about 55% chance for an M flare. I noticed they bumped theirs up to about 10%. I may as well, just because of the uh, uh, that region over there showing some, uh, you know, quite a bit of complexity, and it looks like all of those are in the uh, growing stage, so that will be bumped up. Um, again, no major roars. Let's see what we got going on here for the uh, severe weather department. Not a whole lot here over the next three days. Look at that. Only thunderstorm activity. That is crazy. Now, we do have some tropical systems down here. Uh, this hurricane, though, if if this was not here, uh, I believe that's Humberto, right? If, that, if this big, huge hurricane was not there, this hurricane would definitely hit the eastern portion of the country. But it's actually pulling it away from the states, saving it, saving the states there. And uh, just it brings it back out to the... Uh, back out into the Atlantic. That's crazy. The Fujiwara effect. That's uh, very interesting. Okay, so that's going off to the east. No, I mean, a little bit of rain over there, but not as much as what it could be. We got a storm system out there along the uh, west coast. Thank you very much. I'm, man, it's actually nice and cool out here right now. 62 degrees. We've got some rain showers coming in here over the next couple days with temperatures in the mid-70s. Um, I wish it was a little bit more moisture involved but uh, we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed here uh, you know just notice all the patterns out here are starting to mix up got got the jet stream bringing down a lot of cold air things are intermixing and mingling and that's how you get uh, some pressure differences and storms firing up out here uh, so it's, it's getting into fall time I'm getting quite active out here once again so We'll continue to check back on that. Oh, yeah, I'm just tired. It's been a while since I've yawned on the live stream, but uh, yeah, I'm just tired. Been a, it's been kind of a crazy week, crazy weekend. But uh, tomorrow is Monday. Hope everyone has a good one out there. Uh, let's take a look here at the live seismograph stations. Look, a couple were offline for some reason. 
Uh, looks like the plate, the plate boundary stations there that I use are offline, but uh, they should pop back up here eventually. Yeah, still not working. See that? I didn't get a chance to read all the comments out here, but it seems like it is maybe happening to a few other people out here. See, it's weird. I want, it's some type of glitch there that uh, I don't even know if they're aware about aware of it. Um, I may have to may have to let these guys know. I'm sure they're aware of it. Anyway, I'm out of here, folks. Have a good one. We'll see you guys back out here for the Monday morning update. Take care, everyone. Stay safe.